him, Mr. Monson. You understand you're trespassing right now, right? I have an easement with the previous owner of your property. <laughs> previous being the operative word. Who's this? Just a guy telling you to get back in your nice truck. Hey, Carl. It looks like Mr. Monson hired some muscle. Looks that way. He's a friend of mine. Friend with a big mouth. I hear that a lot. And you probably hear this, too. More than I'd like. And you know the drill. I'm gonna count to three, and you're gonna start walking away. Yeah, right to this one. One. I have a lawyer now. Two. Three. Ah, ah. You yeah, that, boss? <clears throat> you know the drill. Get the hell out of here. That was a clip from Logan, and I'm delighted to be joined by the titular character, Hugh Jackman. Welcome. Thank you, mate. Um, I like being described... Anything is titular. Just sounds good. You just don't want to be called that for sure. Right. You don't want a shortened version of it. <laughs> so um, could you set the scene for us uh, uh, yeah. with Logan? I mean, where do we find the mutant formerly known as Wolverine? We're officially in 2029. So it seems, sounds so far before. It's like 12 years from now. It's frightening. Um, it's further on in the timeline than any of the X-Men movies. But it's also very different from any of the other X-Men movies. Logan and Charles Xavier are in the winter of their lives, shall we say, not doing so well. Charles is, you know, the most powerful brain on the planet, but he has dementia and having seizures. My character is it's unsure what is going on, but it's clear he's not well. He's not healing like he used to heal. He's drinking. He's obviously shutting down in every way. And that's where we find him. He was a limo driver trying to earn enough money to get uh, meds on the black market to uh, keep Charles okay. And they're on the run. So and that's where we find ourselves. It's a very different world, slightly you, dystopian world. You've got to say it's unlike the uh, other X-Men films. I think it's unlike any other superhero film that I've seen. I mean, what was interesting to me was at the beginning, as you described it, it's it's about being broken. I mean, yeah. you know, uh, Xavier's mind is broken. Logan's body is kind of breaking. Society seems to be breaking. It's, it's about kind of brokenness. Xavier's been holed up in this kind of water tank that's falling apart. I mean, everything is broken and damaged. Yeah. And um, I just wonder whether... I mean, I, I must say from the outset, because there's lots of families that, that uh, are fans of the X-Men films and of, of the Wolverine character, this is a very violent, oh, it's an adult dark film. film, isn't it? This is not a film for kids. And you and I both got kids, and my daughter, who's 11, is not really happy with me right now. And there may be other kids who might find it hard to understand, but it's an adult film. Yes, it's violent, but it's really a film about the ramifications of violence. And... I mean, we set out to make a film that wasn't defined by the comic book genre. We really tried to... It's probably more of a Western than a comic book, really, movie. We tried to ask the question, what is it really like to be Wolverine? We use the line literally in the film from Shane, there's no living with a killing. And that's the premise we started with. And so it's very, very different. It is violent but hopefully unsettling in its violence. And it is R-rated, but hopefully more for the them the adult thematics than just gore or swearing. You know? yeah. Uh, yeah, it is sweary as there's well. A, there's a fair bit of swearing. Sweary and stabbing. I do actually remember the the director coming out and going, maybe a few less of the F-words. <laughs> you know, maybe it's like eight films of really, you know, PG-13. There's a rule. You can have one F-word in each PG-13 movie. These weird rules the classifications have. <laughs> Well, maybe my frustration of playing uh, Logan for all those years came out. I was apparently letting, I was letting him fly. <laughs> and who knew Patrick Stewart was such a potty mouth as right, well? Right, loves him. Well, you do know Patrick, and <laughs> I know Patrick. He's about the naughtiest guy I've ever met. He's, che let's say cheeky. Cheeky <laughs> is the word. Cheeky. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's a cheeky knight. Yeah. <laughs> but, it, you know, that, that whole notion of it being a much darker story... And I kind of wrote down some of the themes, and, and maybe there's a theme that uh, stands out for you. You know, the, the can't escape your past. Yep. That's part of you know, dealing with that, which also struck me. It's not just about the character of Logan confronting his past, but also, you know, confronting the past in terms of the X-Men films themselves. Yeah, right. Um, yes. You know, the, the, as you said, this is unlike those. It is a lot darker. Mm -hmm. I just wondered whether, I mean, I kind of have heard that 
you kind of purposefully went for an R rating mm. in America to 15 here. What was behind that? Why? Why go? We Well, actually, what we talked about was uh, we don't want to talk about rating. When we were writing and developing the script, and when I say we were writing, it was James Mangold and Scott Frank wrote it, but when we were developing it, we said, let's not even think about it. Let's make the movie authentic to that character, Wolverine. Anyone who's picked up any comic book knows that he is the darkest, most violent, rudest, the least nice comic book hero or anti-hero really out there. Like So to do him justice, we kind of felt you had to go there. But more, the other interesting thing is for 17 years, I've had people say to me, we haven't fully seen the Berserker rage. And that used to really confuse me at first because in every movie you see him going ah, crazy and... As an actor, I was like, I don't know what else to do. Like, I'd said to Jim Engel, I, I can't go more crazy or berserk if I tried. And he was the one who said, a bit like Unforgiven the movie, you need to really understand the fuel within. You need to see him literally at his lowest, most broken, most down, so that when the rage comes up from there, like in Unforgiven, when he finally confronts Gene Hackman after not going anywhere near it, then it's satisfying on an emotional level. So we wanted to make an emotional movie, not just a action-filled movie. For me, it is so much more than an action film. I mean, I think yeah. that one of the interesting things for me about the violence, which, which I did find shocking, and there's, mm. particularly there's a sequence uh, in the middle of the film where innocent bystanders Family, yeah. kind of, you know, uh, um, get involved. And it is truly, truly shocking. Yeah. You know, in the same way that I was shocked by, you know, Sam Peckinpah films and, you yeah, know, those kind of things, yeah. you know. And it's visceral, and it's horrible, and it's... This one thing I, I carried with... I'm sorry, I'm interrupting you. No, no, you can interrupt all you want. Thanks, man. Um, well, you would get to edit me out. That's perfect. Uh, there's a scene in the comic books. I, can, I don't remember which issue. There's a fight, and at the end of it, two people are dead who were just camping there. And Wolverine's, like, killed them in the middle of this fight, in this blind rage. I was like... That as an idea, as a concept, just two innocent bystanders are dead, was so powerful to me. So it, it's been there. We've just never really been able to get to the bottom of it. What I thought was interesting was that uh, the, the violence for me, uh, though it was gruesome, is never glorified. There was no. never a kind of any element of going, this is in any way kind of fun and sexy or anything like that. It's horrible. It's yeah. really, truly horrible. But also, it struck me as a really a character piece that then informs the violence yes. each time. It seems to me a lot of the kind of superhero films, the superhero characters are there to set up your yes. action set pieces. Right. Whereas this seemed to be the action set pieces came out of the character and the situation. And that's what made me feel it was unlike any other superhero film that I've yeah. seen. And actually, it's interesting you mentioned the Westerns thing. I mean, you take out the claws. Yes. And it really could be one of those kind of classic Westerns. Yeah. You mentioned... Unforgiven, but also for me, it reminded me of films like The Cowboys or The Shootist, even, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, um, in which John Wayne is breaking yes, down yeah. and, you know, has his last hurrah. Uh, um, Jim Mangold made me watch The Cowboys. I hadn't seen it. Oh, really? So, yeah, no, he talked about he, he, You really should talk to Jim. He's much smarter than me. I mean, but you're, <laughs> you're on the same way, wavelength as him and, and you're spot on, exactly right. The, and the Westerns are such a great sort of way to talk about the outsider the guy coming in and you know this you don't know his background and past but you're talking about the themes and i fully agree with you like living with your past living with regret and shame there is a breaking point for people there's a point where they just shut off it's too painful and i think this movie is about the soldier who returns from war like and has to sort of try and find some peace we referenced the comic books in this, you know. Um, yeah, that was very interesting, actually. It was an interesting idea that Jim, and I, I was nervous about it. I thought, is it going to be too meta? Is it going to take people out of the movie? But I think it's really powerful, this idea of everyone thinking you're a legend, you're an icon, everyone thinking you're a hero. But it, what that is not reflected in how you feel. You feel empty, you feel uh, remorseful, guilty, dark, lonely, in pain that's the feeling within you know and so they're bold themes and uh, I was hats off to Jim who really pushed us to go there I mean you've played the character for 17 years 17 years 17 yeah. years which is kind of I don't, I don't think anyone's going to play a, a superhero 
character for as long as that. So you've been on a journey with this character. Is there anything that you've learned from yeah. the character and from the journey? A lot. I, I, you know, playing a guy who literally doesn't care what anybody else thinks about him. In fact, goes out of his way to not have them care about him or him to care about them. Very opposite to me. I think I've come to terms. I think it took maybe 17 years and it took me growing up, I suppose, and having confidence in myself to make this movie, if that makes sense. And it took the kind of courage that I get from that character to stick to my guns and just to go for it. I mean, Jim and I were, I was ready to walk away. I was, if, if the studio weren't going to make the, this version of the movie, I said, no, I'm not going to be upset with you, but I'm done. You know, it's this movie or nothing. And that kind of Wolverine sort of clarity of, um, I don't care what you think, this is what I believe in, I suppose, is seen in this movie um, in a weird way. So, you know, maybe just took me 17 years to get there. It's a long time well, to write know what? this. I, I did read that you said uh, somewhere that that you didn't feel that you'd ever nailed the part. The parts of it I nailed, but either with the storyline or the rating or my performance, I just thought there's... I just always felt there was more to it. I really did. I really somehow felt that, yes, I'd, I'm proud of the movies and I'm not denouncing any of the movies, but there was just gnawing frustration within that there's more. And... I am finished and I am done with it and I'm, I'll am i admit to you, Sanjay, it would be really hard for me to say I was done if I'd looked up at that final film and going, still haven't got it. But I wanted to take out that safety net. I didn't want to do this film thinking, if we don't get it this time, we'll have another go tomorrow. You know, I wanted to kind of put it out there like, no, I don't care about a release date. We are not starting shooting until we're ready. I remember one point... Everyone was saying, great, we're like 90, 95% there. I said, I agree. I said, so cool, should we start in three months? I said, no. When we are 100% right, then we start. So three months from when we are 100%, we start. Mm -hmm. Yeah, some people were frustrated, but, <laughs> but I, 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 I knew there was no second chance. I knew there was another shot at it. Mm -hmm. And doing this part, waking up every day, doing it and committing to it, that was part of it, if you know what I mean. I must just mention uh, your relationship with uh, Daphne Keane, yeah. which is key to this. She's kind of um, 11? She was 11 when yeah, she was she was this? 11. I'm the same age as our kids. Right. That's kind of a tricky thing to have a kid around this kind of film. I mean, was there a... Uh, how quickly did she adapt? How did you... Unbelievably. Her, her father, Will Camp, a well-known uh, actor here, he's in The Crown presently. Her mother is a very famous Spanish actor and director, so she's grown up in the business sort of in the periphery of the business as a child of. They were there on set with her the whole time. Um, the making of these movies, even they're violent, even, never really feel that. Uh, and Jim, for a kid anyway, and Jim deliberately made a set very sort of relaxed and open. So listen, um, I've got an hour's worth of questions, but time is up for us. What do we see you in next? Uh, the Greatest Showman, which is a movie musical. Fantastic. So yes, I'm I'm putting on some uh, some dancing shoes and I'm singing and dancing and maybe that's my therapy after 17 years of Logan. Yeah, or maybe uh, Wolverine <laughs> the musical. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much, Hugh. And good luck with the uh, taking over the role. That's, Thank you. Yes, Thanks very it's much. It's great. We've announced it here. <clears throat> that's great. <laughs>